you know animal models for cancer it's a very important topic which every um, uh, laboratory animal veterinarian or any veterinarian should understand you know animal models are valuable tools for studying the biology and genetics of human cancer as well as for pre preclinical investigation also and for anti cancer therapeutics and for cancer prevention you know various animal models have been generated by genetic engineering graft transplantation by viral physical and chemical induction and this data has helped us to gain more knowledge on genetic mechanisms which is causing this uh, malignant transformation and cancer progression and here in this webinar i will just list out some of the models which is used for pre, uh, basic as well as pre, uh, pre clinical studies of cancers you know what is cancer cancer you know all of you know it is i think everyone will know cancer is nothing but abnormal growth of the cells and in and for developing a cancer it needs four process initiation uh, uh, promotion progression and metastasis just see from the slide a yeah, single cell is genetically altered how it is genetically altered it may be by mutation or genetic mutation and after mutation what it happens is the cell tries to grow more rapidly and after growth what it goes is it goes to, it, it tries to change its shape and change its form also what is called as dysplasia then it will be lying for a one place for few it is a longest period where it stays for uh, in situ cancer what do we call it as in situ cancer it lies in the tissue for a longer period and later it starts metastasis how the metastasis is started it is It, it, the cancer cells enters into the blood and lymph nodes, and it from one organ to other organ, it, it gradually spreads from one organs to other organs. See, now for uh, application of models, there are various applications of models for drug, drug discovery of our cancer. One is using cell lines, the second is translation research, and third is clinical research. There are many cell lines available. and cell lines helps to you know it helps to uh, know the which molecules uh, that is uh, which molecule is effective in treating cancer cells or anything by in vitro by uh, finding the good molecule that is what i mean to say is uh, if you are able to uh, screen the good molecules and this molecules will help to study on the preclinical animals which may be rodents from rodents there are some other large animal models like dogs and cats which is also used for any preclinical studies from preclinical studies it gradually goes to the human models for final testing of the drugs this is a picture this is a graphical illustration where uh, it is a review article um, which was published in nine, uh, 2016 actually and they had um, analyzed that meta analyst from all the data where um, animal models has been used and if you see most of the animal models is all cell line based models you can see more than 82% of the studies which on cancer they used cell line based the second model which they used was usually you know the uh, genetically engineered mouse models and the third is some pdx and last is environmental induced model this is a meta analysis and the, the data which has get gathered from the, the all part of the journals and uh, and illustrating which model is mostly used if you find the cell line based derived uh, model is mostly used now in recent term this cell line derived models is gradually replaced by humanized mouse models i will i will i will in future slides i will explain what is going on what are the uses of mouse models for cancers it helps to study cancer and genetic gene interaction you know we can isolate cell lines from genetically engineered mouse and from different tissue of cancer origin you know that is more important say if, uh, from a mouse we can isolate any types of cancer cell lines of uh, which is originated from that particular species of animals we can engineer special type of mouse which is having cancer and it helps to study the cancer it also under, helps to understand pharmacology and molecular biology of drugs that is treated for cancers 
And finally, for efficacy, efficacy of anti-cancer drugs, these most models are mostly used. What are the advantages? You know, mice are mammals. Human is also mammals. You know, mouse genetics is very well known. And, you know, the genome of mouse and the human is more or less similar. And the histopathology of the disease of the mouse model is well established. And each disease, at least uh, pathological lesion is clearly demonstrated. And what are the disadvantages? There will be disadvantages in using a mouse model also, obviously. You know, the slow generation of time of some tumor, mice and human immunology differs in certain immune cells. It, it, exactly, uh, for example, if you see the lymphocytes, in mice it is 75 to 90 percent and human it is 30 to 50 percent. And if you see the neutrophils, in mouse it is 10 to 25 percent and in human it is 50 to 70 percent. And if you see the hematopoiesis of the spleen, spleen, it is active in the adult in mouse. But in case of human, it ends before the birth. And uh, you know, another example is CD4 on the macrophages. It is completely absent in mouse, but in humans, it is present. And if you see the leukocyte def defensins, it is absent in mouse, but it is present in human. These are some of the human immunology and mouse immunology, which differs uh, with some of the immune cells but it helps to understand in a better way. Now, coming to the various mouse models used for cancer. One is syngenic mouse model. It is between similar, similar species and strain. Using, this is, this is uh, how it is used is using the mouse cell lines and injected into the same mouse, actually. It can be orthotropic or subcutaneous. The second is xenograft models. It is between different species and strain. It is by human tumors. Cells are injected in the mouse or rats. It may be a cell lines from the human cancer or it may be the tissue from the human. What we call as PDX, patient-derived xenografts. The third is genetically engineered mouse models. Between similar, similar species and strain. It is uh, using by most, or mostly it is done on the mouse model by either uh, genetically modified method using transgenics or knockout or anything for our uh, gene uh, genetic engineering, we can overexpress the on oncogenes and uh, you can uh, download the, that is, uh, we can knock out the tumor suppressor genes and see the study and study the effects of tumors. And lastly comes the humanized mouse model. It is between species and strain. For example, tumor tumor into the mouse or rats. Well, in addition, they are we, we, we co-transplant of human immune or stroma cells. And transgenics for human growth factor is also included in the humanized mouse models. And lastly, there are other models such as carcinogen-induced models using various carcinogen and spontaneous model, which occurs spontaneously in some of the inbred mouse strains. First, I will, talk, I will try to explain some of the few inbred mouse strains which develop spontaneous tumor. The more, first and foremost important, what I want to say is this AKRJ strain. It is a very good strain for leukemia studies. It spontaneously developed leukemia at 6 to 9 months of age and particularly in females. The strain also expresses AKV murine leukemia virus in all types of tissues. And it is mostly used for leukemia studies and it is a spontaneous tumor model. Uh, which is seen in AKR mice. You know, the 6 to 19 months, it's a larger period, what I mean to say. Usually the age, it, uh, what you can, mostly it would be seen around 10 to 18 months of age, actually. And uh, so, um, this, uh, moreover, most of the inbred mouse models will develop some of the tumors at later stages of age, but leukemia develop particularly in this AKR J strain. Second is AJL's J strain. This is also an inbred strain. It develops reticulum cell carcinoma, which resembles Hodgkin disease by approximately one year of age. The third spontaneous tumor mouse model is AJ strain. It is causes lung adenoma, and it mostly occurs in females. That to 32 percent of the females are more prone to this uh, tumor, and six percent of the very few uh, males are prone to this lung tumor. And it occurs at three to four months, followed by 100 frequency at 18 to 24 months of age. It, another another uh, tumor which spontaneously occurs in this uh, mice strain is mammary adenocarcinoma in mated females. But um, and uh, in case of C3HEJ, 
Hitri H J is one of the good strain. It is a uh, TLR four or TLR four uh, that is responder. What it it is a good model for uh, TLR four studies. Uh, and, uh, and when you are injecting LPS, it is a good responder. Most it is a good uh, responder. And uh, it is mostly causing this mammary tumor virus. Most mammary tumor and it, it, uh, even virgin and and non breeding, breeding fem uh, virgin females also develop this mammary tumors but not in but ajms doesn't uh, develop in uh, virgin females but the c3hej develops in even in virgin females the third is liver tumor liver tumor you can see in cbs strain and c3hhj mostly liver hepatoma at later age that is 14 months of age and you know all uh, most of the people most of the laboratory have this bulky strain and uh, most uh, most reticular neoplasm from primary lung tumors and renal tumors mostly develop at the later stage of age but it is not very significant as compared to the other strains of mouse another thing is uh, another model another mouse strain which we use regularly is if this and blcg it is long lived and have a low susceptibility of, of tumors but at, uh, there are few uh, reports showing that at uh, later part of the age at eight, after 18 months what is called as aged mice Uh, you can see more tumors as, uh, occurring in this strain also, and uh, CD1 mice. It is a outbred mice. The above, all the above mice which I had mentioned is inbred strains of mouse, and the CD1 mouse is outbred mice. It causes lymphoma at ninth week, but it is not very. Uh, it, all the mice, all the mouse of CD, all the CD1 mice will not carry. They will not cause lymphoma. Only few strains, few numbers will cause, and uh, occasionally after 30 weeks. that is more susceptible to myeloid leukemia hepatocellular adenoma bronchoalveolar adenoma adenocarcinoma osteosarcoma and mammary adenocarcinoma and osteosarcoma okay now comes the syngenic mouse model syngenic mouse model is nothing but a strain a tumor which is originated from a strain and the tumor is isolated and the and the tumor cells are grown in vitro and injected into the same strain for example the for example the spontaneous tumor for, which is occurred in your black sheets mice for example uh, and the tumor which is which has originated from the black sheets mice are removed and they are cultured in vitro and the, after culturing the cell lines are transferred to the same black sheets mice Uh, this is called syngenic mouse model what are its advantages it is simple and it is very low cost and the tumor growth is very rapid and it has a high reproducible phenotypes there are some disadvantages of this strain also mouse immune system you know already i told mouse immune system is somewhat different uh, different from human immune system and uh, very less spontaneous tumor mouse model we are getting in in bred strains so all the tumors of inbred uh, we can't get all the spontaneous many uh, spontaneous tumor are in inbred strains so there, there is very less spontaneous tumor mouse model and uh, lack of inter and intertumor heterogeneity and it alters environment microenvironment including changes in the vascular lymphatic and immune compartment and genetic heterogeneity and irreversible change in the gene expression are imposed by long term in vitro propagation this is how uh, when we are uh, culture the cell line in vitro there are more changes in the gene expression and uh, gen genetic heterogeneity and the irreversible changes are seen so these are some of the disadvantages of using syngenic mouse model uh this is one example which i want to show you a yes, syngenic mouse model this is b6 f20 f f0 cells this is Yes, cell line which is isolated from C57 BLC mice, and uh, it it is a spontaneous melanoma which occurred in the later stage of black sheep mice. And what the, after after the, the cell lines after uh, in vitro cultured, they are injected into the black sheep mice. Say uh, the the number of cell lines used is more than five millions, and they are injected subcutaneously. And after eight to ten days, you can see the the how the melanoma has occurred in the black sheep mice. this is one of the model to show you how the syngenic that is cell lines isolated from the uh, same strain is used in the same strain to the study the tumor there is another uh, another 
model called hepatocella carcinoma model. The first model where you have seen is injecting the uh, cells inside subcutaneously. Here, the, it is orthotopic injection of the cell, line, cell lines. This is HEPA-1-2 cells actually. They are injected intrasplenically into the black six mice. And after that, is, uh, this is HEPA-1-6 cell lines is nothing but hepatocella, that is hepatoma, hepato HCC carcinoma cell lines. They are injected into the spleen, actually the intrasplenically. And after uh, 28 days, you can see the growth of the uh, tumor in the liver. See, this is one of the orthotopic model which is used to inject cell lines and uh, of the same syngenic cell lines. One is subcutaneous injection of uh, syngenic cell lines, and the second is orthotopic injection of the uh, syngenic cell lines. These are some of the important cell lines which is routinely practiced in uh, in preclinical studies. See, a breast usually they use EMP sits or FOT1 and for fibros, sarcoma, vicky 164 and kidney, renka cell lines and liver X22, HEPA126 and lymphoma, A20 and G7, myeloma, MPC11 and pancreatic PAN02, prostate RM1 and bladder MBT2, colon, colon, cyst 26, glioma, GL26 and leukemia, C1498 and melanoma, BL6, um, B16, F0, F10, melanoma cell lines and neuroblastoma or neuro2a and plasma cytoma j558 these are some of the uh, common cell lines which are used for syngenic mouse models and you can if you want to have uh, you want to select a cell lines there is uh, these are the some of the um, companies you know atcc taconic they have if you can give the reference all types of cell lines and uh, where it is originated and what type of, uh, whether it causes metastasis or anything like that, you can, complete details can be obtained from this website. That is Taconic or uh, CL3 GmbH. You can have the complete list of mouse cell lines which is used for uh, syngenic mouse model. Advantages of cancer cell lines. You know, it is very easy to handle and manipulate. And uh, highly homogeneity and high degree of similar with initial tumor. High varieties available. See, for example, for you know, there are many melanoma cell lines. When we talk about a melanoma, there are many melanoma cell lines available, and we can study each cell lines and the, uh, how with the melanoma and, and the genetic and the varieties of the tumors, how it developed from various strains of various strains of melanoma, and it can be easily substituted. If one cell line is not working, we can change with other cell line which is working, and that is a reproducibility of the cells. The main disadvantage is cross contamination and loss of heterogeneity, and moreover, there is a mycoplasma contamination. If there is any mycoplasma contamination in the cell lines, the tumor will not be established in your mouse model. And difficult to establish long term cell lines. Another important change is cell line genetic changes you can see, as well as mRNA changes uh, or gene expression changes after um, uh, propagating 